Welcome back everybody and in this video we'll be making this huge clock. So I've amassed all the parts here to assemble this clock in one day. Uh, you could print it all and get it all ready in one day so it's definitely a one day build but before we get onto that let's talk about first cars. For a lot of us we get the opportunity to buy our first car and it's the cheat code to life right? You've got keys to a car, you can come and go as you please, you don't have to worry about friends or family dropping you off, you've got the world at your feet. What was your first car? Let me know in the comments. My first car was a Mark 1 Ford Escort. I know it had a 1300 motor in it, but I put a BCF2 ground cam in it. It lacked cam followers, extractors, and a 3236 downdraft Weber. It sounded like it could do 100 miles an hour, but it was really struggling to do maybe 120 k's. My next car was a big step forward. It was a BFMR with a 1600 twin cam turbo engine, so I'd never wanted to see that Escort again until now because I see they're selling for around $25,000, which is probably a better investment than Bitcoin maybe, I'm not too sure, but that's what spawned this uh, project. It's going to be a clock based off the gauges that were in that Mark 1 Escort. My one wasn't flash enough to have a rev counter, but I, they did come with rev counters. If you still don't know what a Mark 1 Escort is, car, that blue car from the Fast 6 uh, movie. So this is going to be my take on sort of the flipper clocks you can get where the hour numbers are on one side and the minute numbers on the other but on this one the speedo is going to be the hours and the taco is going to be the minutes. So the first thing we're going to do when making this clock is how we need the arms to move to hours and minutes and it's all done here. So here's what it looks like. Uh, it looks super complicated but it, it really isn't. Basically it's just a controller to check the time, a clock, so when we disconnect the power it's already got the time available so unless the battery dies the clock is always going to be accurate and two drivers because we can't drive the motors which turn the dials directly from the controller or it'll burn it out so what happens is we we power it on the motor it doesn't know where it is in space or time so we've got this little switch here and it just goes and homes itself and then the pico asks the clock what the time is and it moves the hour hand and the minute hand to the right position based on the amount of steps calculated off the face of our dial. So once we've got our electronics together we've got to just put our gauges together. To make these gauges it's a bit of a, a gauge burger and um, we've got the, the surround which holds it all and I did a short about this silver paint or silver pen you could put on the front. It didn't work out very well. Uh, it was looked amazing when it went on to start with and then over time it just started getting matter and matter and and really washed out but I have found an, another solution for that uh, which I haven't got in time for this video but it'll definitely be a better looking silver this is just that chrome plate with some clear um, paint over the top of it so make it look a bit, a bit shinier and we just chuck on our, our front lens it's just three millimeter acrylic cut on the old drill press back there and we just chuck in the spacer which uh, because we need enough room for the um, the needle to be able to move. And then we've got the dial. Dials I've, um, if you've missed the F40 uh, video, which I made an F40 dash, complete F40 dash, I use the same process. So what you do is you just paint one side of the acrylic with paint, use the old engraver over there to blast off the, the areas you need white, and then put some white vinyl over it to make it go white. I needed yellow in the middle for this particular gauge because that's what it looked like on the original and uh, it's fully protected so you can't scratch it from behind and you can't obviously can't scratch it on the front it's just like the ideal solution and then we've just got our motor and we would just pop that on the back with the motor facing up grabbing our dials put the dial in we don't care where it is because once it's up and running it's going to go around and home itself. Pop that inside and we've got a couple of screws on the side to mount it all together and then we put it inside our, our frame. So I know this this wood is from, or well this vinyl is from the, uh, if you haven't seen it already, the arcade machine. I think so that's the vinyl, this vinyl wrap left over. I thought well, well I'll use it for this project. It's a bit darker but it, it looks alright when it's all put together. So once we've got the dials in, uh, we'll put the back and the surround on and we'll fire it up. So I've got all the gauges in place here and these two little uh, novelty pieces where um, if you look at the original gauge, that's, that's just what they look like. Uh, they probably had indicator lights and beam lights or something in there, but I'm not worrying about those too much. 
I probably should touch on this case. I did a short about this product that I used because I wanted this surface to be nice and flat. And when you 3D print, it's like pancakes one on top of the other, and you're always going to get these little beveled edges, and it takes forever to finish. And I thought there's going to be an easy way. And I just went down to the local car shop and they sold this stuff called Bolchin Spray Putty. I don't think you can actually get it in the States. And literally, I sprayed it and it was it, it became flat uh, so I did it twice and it was amazing you know, I did it three times and it was as flat as and the amount of work to get a decent result would just vanish so it was such a good starting point I thought well I'll, I'll just sand it as well so I hit it with some 1200 grit sandpaper just to smooth it out even more and, and the result got even better put another coat on and then I just sprayed it with black and the finish is just like it's like not being 3D printed so I don't know these people at all it's not cheap it's like $34 but it's definitely paid for itself it's quite satisfying to shake because it sounds like it's like it's full of sand but you probably can get any sort of putty spray definitely try it on your um, 3D prints so if you want to cut down your labour time this one wasn't so bad because it's got flat edges. I'm not sure what it'll be like on ornaments or something like that, but definitely um, to take all the work out of finishing off the 3D prints, try something like that. Uh, so it's all together, and my electronics, and I just got to sort of sandwich them together, and then we'll go through actually setting the time. Can you see me? So here's the clock in its case, ready to go. Uh, so we're just going to go through the process of setting up the time so I've just got hooked up to a battery pack here um, so it's not connected to the computer we plug it in and as soon as we plug it in it wants to find home so the uh, hands should go back to their home position and it um, goes back to the start and then it asks the clock inside it what the time is and it moves the hour hand and the second hand so you're saying how do you read the time on a clock like that well the speedo goes to 130 so just take off the zero off the end and it goes 1 to 12 so there's your 12 hours and the ref counter goes to 60 which is 60 minutes or 00 or 59 minutes and it's your minutes so how do you set the time there's no switches well, because we're using a Pipeco, it's got an access point on it, so we just set up a captured portal and then we browse to a web page and we can set the time on the clock um, to whatever we want. So the time you're going to see on your screen is different to what's going to be on here because I'm recording them at different times, but basically it's got a, a field in here which is pre-filled in with your browser time and you just set it, so I'll just set it to a different time and we should see the arms and minutes change. And it's moved immediately to the time set on my phone and it's going to stay there forever and some of you are saying well why don't you just use internet time because i don't want some random device sitting on my network just for checking the time when i've got a real time clock built into it so it just it's, it's just advertised for a little while and then it's sort of up and running just to finish it off i put some rubber feet on the bottom just to protect my cover on the back a usb-c for power fuse because i'm not really into fires bit of a logo of, of the old car and some instructions on how to set up the hotspot for setting the time. Well there you go guys, hopefully that gives you some inspiration to build something this weekend. If you want some of the parts for this clock, check out my shop here. And if you've made it this far, you should definitely subscribe. Thanks for watching.